we're all born thinking like entrepreneurs. Families and friends convince you not to be an entrepreneur. The true entrepreneurs will just keep figuring it out. If you pull up your car outside of a mall, you open your trunk and you were selling something for a dollar and you sold 50 of them in three minutes, you close that trunk, you call me. Yeah. Because we're gonna sell those things out of every single mall, city, state, country, we're even gonna sell them on Mars if we can sell them that quick. Behind the Brand features the people who are making things happen. Get insights to grow your business from the experts who've done it. Get Behind the Brand. Sponsored by DocuSign, the global standard for e-signature. Get your free trial at DocuSign.com forward slash Behind the Brand. Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with entrepreneur Damon John. Damon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Damon, I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? How'd I get this job? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the short story is, uh, you know, years ago, around 1989, I came up with this concept, FUBU, For Us, By Us. I was frustrated. I didn't think that um, um, designers were making clothes for the inner city kids. No color, not a certain color, but the guys who loved rap music and yeah. they, they loved this culture. And, you know, I, um, I took 10 t-shirts and I kept putting them on videos and taking them back off the wrapper and putting in other videos. And before I know it, it was on 40 videos and people thought I was this huge company when I was a waiter at Red Lobster with 10 t-shirts in my basement. <laughs> now, you're from the East Coast, right? I am. So what were you doing? I mean, you were... Working at a restaurant, hustling, trying to get it done. Yeah. And so what, what motivated you to do FUBU? Was it like you were at your wit's end? Or tell us, like, how did it get started? Well, you know what? Uh, I think what motivated me initially was the fact that um, I loved hip-hop and I loved fashion. And I couldn't rap and I couldn't dance. Um, but I was fortunate enough to grow up in Hollis, Queens, where there was a lot of rappers from there. Uh, Salt and Pepper, LL Cool J, Run DMC. Yeah. I started going on tours. I needed to find a way to continue going on tours. I wasn't getting paid for it. I was going and running and getting sandwiches for LL Cool J. So what I started to do was I started to buy clothes from Manhattan. I would go on a tour. I would sell the clothes to rappers and other, uh, you know, kids in the audience. And, aha, the light went off that maybe I can actually make some money doing this. Yeah. Define what you think an entrepreneur is. Um, I think an entrepreneur is somebody that understands that they're responsible for uh, you know every single failure, it stops at them. That uh, they're somebody that needs to figure something out, and they're not going to figure it out right away. But they're sooner or later going to unlock every single key to figure out how to be yeah. productive. Um, I think an entrepreneur is somebody who thinks outside the box, and when everybody else says no, they say yes. Um, so entrepreneurs really is about taking responsibility for your actions and understanding that um, there's many people that will that will help you in regards to your success, but only you will be the one that's responsible for your failures. I like that. Now that you've got resources, you've got money, you've got people, is it easier now to start something or was it easier back when you had maybe less to lose or more to gain or tell us about the perspective. You know, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Um, it's easier now to start, but it's easier now to fail. Um, because when you get to a level where you have too many options, often you don't have enough information. And I can throw money at 10 things, and I often do, and only two things or one thing works if I'm lucky, and I don't concentrate on it enough. But on the flip side, um, when you have enough resources, you can wait and look at other opportunities that you traditionally wouldn't take on. But you may see somebody and they say, well, I'm doing a million dollars in business. Well, I can hopefully get you to two million dollars in business. So as things change, they stay the same. It's really that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you never stop learning. And um, I've failed way more than I succeeded. Um, but I would say right now, it's generally easier because of not the opportune time that it is now, it's all the things I've lost in over the past. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm, I'm horrible at. How long do you give a good idea before you kind of cut bait? I mean, you know it's a viable thing. You, maybe you're passionate about it, but how long do you give it before you're just like, this isn't working, we gotta give up and move on? Um, you know, if, if it's going from an incubation stage, it can take five, ten years because you're, you start thinking about it year one and year two and year three, you still are thinking about it and you go, yeah. all right, this hasn't just gone away. This needs to happen. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you start to learn the business with it and it can take ten years. Yeah. If it's an opportunity where you're investing, um, it, can, it probably is a three-year deal where you go, we've done everything or... 
I'm not interested in learning any more of this. It's, it's, it's creating bigger challenges. I'm losing more in other places that yeah. I have already created. So I would say opportunities that come around um, every day, I would put three to five years in it. Long-term opportunities that you're thinking about, I would say 10 years. So that works for you, you've, you've got resources. So the, some of the people that are watching this show, you know, they're, they've got this startup, they've, they're just bootstrapping. What advice would you give to them about how long to give a worthy project before they give up. I mean, it's. I think it's something everyone struggles with. Yeah, and that's a big challenge. So I, I would say for them to have milestones and for them to set their goals. So if there's somebody that, uh, you know, they have a day job and they plan on putting in seven hours a week onto this side hustle job idea concept, you know, Put, make sure that, that compounds, and over the year, how much time will you put into it? And and at what stage would you like to see? Would you like to see the business grow from a thousand dollars a week to five or ten? But make sure it's affordable steps that you and and goals that you feel you can hit. And then you'll realize if you're willing to put one year, two years, or ten years into it. Uh, some people just want to do it because they want to be an entrepreneur and they want to change the world and they just want to see things change. They don't have to make money. That's what I was going to ask you. So, what are some of those? business milestones that you would recommend so obviously revenue is great you know when you've got sales and you've got demand and you're moving product that's great but maybe talk about some of those uh, tougher to measure metrics for those people who are still hanging on the tougher to measure metrics are basically I'm making fifty thousand dollars a year if I put two three hours of, of uh, work and time into this a week at the end of the year will I make a certain amount of money or at the end of the year well, I changed somebody's life. It all depends on what are you in it for, because yeah. many entrepreneurs are into things for social reasons yeah. as well. So um, you just really have to put a metric on what are you looking for. At the end of the day, you're the customer. Yeah. What are you going to get out of it? Yeah. So what's in it for you? Like, what are some of the things that moves the needle for you? What are what do you care about? Yeah. What are some of your success metrics personally? Personally, so yeah. you know, um, I always say people have to put their their goals or themselves into two to five words. Whether it's Apple, think different, Nike, just do it, Google for us, buy us. And you have to put a personal one. So my 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 most recent one over the last maybe five six years have been I'm on a quest. Um, I went out and I started writing books uh, several years ago to change entrepreneurs' lives and make it a little easier for them. And I think that. I've been blessed. I've always come up with uh, acronyms and or names and titles of my businesses that were about helping other people for us, by us. My book name, Display of Power, meaning that you have a certain power inside you. The brand within, you're a brand before anything else. And I love fulfilling people's lives. So I believe that uh, you know my quest right now is to change people's lives, have fun at the same time, and challenge people. I can go out and hire a bunch of people and give them big juicy salaries. I love hiring people and or doing deals on Shark Tank with that person has a twinkle in their eye. They're not getting this big luxury salary, but you know what, four to five years, they turn around and go, I'm making that money now and I help do it myself. It wasn't handed to me and that's what I get yeah. fulfillment on. So that's that's amazing, that's great. So you're, you're really empowering people, but why do you think you get so much joy out of that? Is that because that's what you wanted originally when you first started your business? You wanted someone to mentor you and you didn't have it? or get, Help us, like, what do you think that is? Where did it come from? Um, I, wanted at, I wanted at first to empower a culture and I was, fortunate that, I was fortunate enough that many people helped me. Then I went on to do business where I felt bad when I was making a lot of money and I had a lot of people around me but they were around for the wrong reasons. Um, and when business went bad. Uh, in between that time of FUBU not being as high as it was and then I didn't acquire Kooji and my other brands, I started to see how people really were. The fair so weather called friends. celebrity friends, the yeah. fair weather friends. And I decided at that point, I want to have fun and make money with people I like. Yeah. Because uh, even if the money doesn't come, having fun. And, and that's really how FUBU started initially. I just wanted to dress and go on tour and make stuff of me and my, and my friends that we want to see, uh, you know, other people in. And yeah. then all of a sudden, the whole world, you know, jumped onto that, that theory that I had. Yeah. So for you, it's about lifestyle. It is. It's about a state of mind. It is. It, it absolutely is. It's not about how many cars, how many planes. Um, I, I try to live a very uh, humble life. Um, it's about having a good time, enjoying your friends, enjoying your health and your family first, and, you know, leaving with a legacy. You know, not, don't just leave money when you leave this planet. Leave with a legacy. Who did you help change? Yeah. And don't, listen, I'm, 
I'm not Gandhi here. You know, I, I'm into it for a profit as well, but that comes second. Yeah. I think you can have both. I think when, if you prosper, you can help other pe people prosper. And it's kind of like I imagine, you know, this, this glass of water, you know, you really can't share with anyone else until your cup is full. Yeah. And once it starts rolling over, then you, you've got extra to share with people, you know? You, absolutely, absolutely. But it's inside out, don't you think? It, it, it 100%. You have to, and, and you know, and being selfish, if you give, you will receive. Uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Jay Abraham, my mentor, he, he tells me that all the time. And, and I've become that person that I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. So was there ever a time that you held grudges? I mean, it's, you talk about fair weather friends, and you talk about, uh, I can't remember who said it, but it's like, you know, if you're not willing to be with me during the most difficult times in my life, I'm not interested in having you around when I'm successful. You know that mentality? Yes, absolutely. Have you ever held a grudge? Oh, of course. I'm human. I've held many, many grudges. Yeah. Um, um, but you know what? I, I, I ended up learning that how can I take my time and energy, you know, spending thinking about this person, I'm taking it off of myself. And then I realized... It's not me to judge what somebody has gone through the last 30, 40 years of their life and why they're bringing it to the table. Listen, if your daddy locked you in the closet for the last, you know, when you were a kid and told you these things, you may be screwed up in your head. Why am I, why am I holding that responsible? And then, you know, I just realized, you know, life is pretty much like, you know, like a game of chess. If I'm playing chess with you and you make a move, why am I getting mad at you? I know what you're doing. You're making the move to win. Yeah. And when people do things against you, they're just trying to win in whatever twisted way or perception they believe winning is. So, yeah. you know. So a colleague of yours, Mark Cuban, is famous for saying business is sport or business is like a yeah. game. And, and he wrote that book basically saying, you know, you ought to play business like you play games, play to win. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. How do you feel about the phrase, um, it's, it's just business, it's not personal? Um, I agree. You know... You can go and give money to charity if this is a charitable cause, and let's make it clear what it is. Um, you can, I have many, many friends that I do business with, and we know where to draw the line um, with uh, business and personal. I just don't believe that as we had grown up, you know, watching the 80s and Dynasty and all this thing, you had to be this uh, vicious businessman, the Gordon Geckos of the world. Yeah. I don't believe you have to do that. I'm fortunate enough to be uh, mentored by people like Russell Simmons, um, by people like Cuban, who, you know, they, 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 they're not out to screw you. Yeah. But there is a way to draw the line with business, you know. Um, I, I've fired many friends and said, are you coming to the barbecue tomorrow? Yeah. I mean, it's just we can't work together, you know. Yeah. Well, where do you draw that line, you think? Business is business, but in, you know, as the world becomes, uh, as the world barriers to geography go away mm -hmm. and, you know, Social media is bringing all us all together. Uh, you know, look at Twitter as a great example. It's a way that brands can now communicate one to one with their consumers. Sure, isn't it becoming more personal? It is, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still business. So if we agree on something, you know, whether it's your customer or whether it's your friend, you see, when, when you have a brand, you promise one thing to your customer and you have to keep delivering on that promise. The day you stop delivering on that promise, that customer moves elsewhere because that's why they were supporting you. The same thing with friends. I'm going to give you X amount to work for me. And the friend says, and I'm going to work for you for 10 hours a day. Yeah. If you decide to work for me five hours a day, you're not keeping your promise. If I decide to give you less than I promise you, I'm not keeping my promise. It's a contract. Yeah. That's it. Deliverables, what is expected. If both parties understand this, that's it. And, you know, I've had to let go friends in very hard positions, but if I didn't let that person go and that division kept failing, I would have to let go many other people that lives depend on me, yeah. that lives depend on this person. So it's just, it's just reality. So you talked about knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. Have you ever had to fire yourself, take yourself out of a position because you weren't as good at it as you thought? Oh, absolutely. There's several different levels of that. I've had to close down uh, companies or initiatives because um, I wasn't there enough or I could have made the wrong decision and say, hey, guys, we're out of the money. Guys or girls, we're out of the money and I have to blame myself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. All the things um, I've initiated is started to grow and I've had to say, all right, I don't have the time to allocate towards this. I'm going to have to hire somebody to put them in there. And that's not firing yourself. That's a good problem, actually, because that's saying the business is growing and needs more attention. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, you always have to be very honest with yourself and you're, you're the person who has to fire or hire yourself a lot of times. Sometimes I've given jobs to others 
and maybe there's outside venture into the deal and the deal is it's not working the way I would like it to and mm -hmm. I have to stop something I'm doing going listen I hired this person it's not doing well there's other people that depend on this and I need to jump in there I need to sacrifice what I'm personally doing and I need to jump in there and it's it's you know it's a six alarm fire all yeah. hands on deck and now you're kind of teaching and empowering groups of people. Now you're doing business conferences, aren't you? Yeah, I do. I speak often. Um, I have a new uh, curriculum. It's a Shark Academy that I go out and I speak to people. But um, it's a, it's a three-day academy. And what we do is we, we train people on business. And if they want to then go and, and have one-stop shopping with their websites and everything else, we, we have packages for them. Um, I was skeptical about doing it for two to three years and I've gotten offers by ten different companies because when I used to go to some of those real estate uh, uh, curriculums, yeah. I felt dirty when I left there. Like I was upsold everything from bow ties to yeah. books, right? It's like a get rich quick uh, scheme, right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, I went through many, many uh, uh, individuals so I found the, the right one and what I did was I sent my staff there and some of my staff who have graduated very prestigious colleges in entrepreneurship and they came back going, I paid how much to go to college and I could have went to that. So, so you know, um, so it's a curriculum that we share with people. And more importantly, I get to put my uh, Shark Tank, uh, you know, entrepreneurs through there already. So when I do a deal on Shark Tank, I do about 15 deals a year. I got a, I got a, a curriculum for these guys to, to kind of get uh, strengthened as we become partners. How long does it take you to learn something new? I mean, it seems like uh, when I watch the show, I'm a big fan, by the way. Uh, thank you. Um, you've, what I love... I really like you because you are very selective about the projects. It seems like you know your wheelhouse, your yes. expertise, and you don't go and venture far out of that. Right. Um, how long does it take you to learn something new? And how often are you challenged to do it? I don't learn something new often. I, uh, I try to improve on what I know. I know, my, you know. I know my area, and I try to improve on that. Um, so, you know, that's a good point about Shark Tank. I'm very selective, but what I've learned on Shark Tank um, and in person, in personal life, is that there are no shortcuts. So if you don't know it, you either need to acquire somebody that knows it or you need to learn it. And, uh, you know, on Shark Tank, when I go into other deals, I may need a Lori, a Robert, a Mark because they know it. And can I, instead of being a shark, can I be a buzzard? Can I get a free ride yeah. on, you know, Cuban's back, right? Yeah. Um, and that, that I know I don't have to do the heavy lifting. Um, in current business, that's I try to partner up, and strategic partners yeah. are way more important than money. I think that is a very subtle point. I want to underscore. I hope no one missed that what he just said because it was gold. If it, you can find efficiencies instead of being the shark trying to do it all yourself, you can look for efficiencies. Partner up with people who do stuff you know, better than you do or Absolutely. more efficiently or more cost effective. And I think a lot of people overlook that opportunity. All right, let's say just clothing. When I start up in clothing, you know, FUBU, um, Etonics, Kooji, all the brands I own, I only do menswear, Yeah. right? I go out and license ladies, boys, boots, fragrance, and everybody would sit there and go, well, you're a fashion designer. No, no, no. If I'm doing menswear, if I want to do a fragrance, there's whole different factories, there's whole different buyers, there's yeah. whole different buying seasons. You have to mix the gels, you have to make molds for the bottles. Yeah. I can't learn every single division, and that's still in somewhat in my area of business. Yeah. I have to go and license it, and I'd rather split a dollar and a half with somebody to make way more than go try to learn it myself and lose trying to understand a whole other industry. I want to talk about Shark Tank again, and so on Shark Tank, it seems like sometimes... Sometimes these people who are pitching you, are really, they really try your patience. Yes. And you get emotional sometimes, like, I don't want to say, maybe emotional is the wrong word. You, you become impatient, it seems. So that's my perception. Correct. What is your, what's your thought process? Are you trying to teach them a business lesson about, you know, doing it the right way? And then maybe let's unpack that a little bit and talk about how entrepreneurs could p pitch future investors or VCs about their idea. I get irritated and maybe impatient. We all do for various different reasons. So first of all, many people don't know that those pitches can be up to two and a half hours and you're only seeing eight minutes of it. Yeah. So you, you don't see a lot of the things that are happening there. Second of all, uh, you know, only God can judge you. I'm not, I'm not up there to judge you. I'm up there to judge if the business is good for me. And you know, I feel like you're really a teacher, a mentor and you know, someone who's trying to actually help these people. And it doesn't come off as critical to me, but... 
Well, we are trying to because we're trying to give them the insight. And I think that even though Kevin O'Leary is a very evil person <laughs> to his core, yeah. I believe at the end of the day, he's telling the cold hard truth. You know, sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, he, he may be a little harsh, but sometimes he needs to say that. And why we're trying to educate people is this. Entrepreneurship is amazing. Entrepreneurship can give you financial freedom. But entrepreneurship can also... Uh, hurt other people and if you're somebody and you have this dream of this hockey stick business is gonna go to five million the next day and if you only get one percent of a jillion dollar market you got this and that I wanna save you from taking grandma's money I wanna save you from going into your 401k and I wanna save you for all the family members around you who are gonna invest a hundred two hundred thousand in your dream because they yeah. love you and then you're gonna turn around and go, I didn't know any better, oops, I made a mistake, that's yeah. all. Yeah. So it, it's about educating people and I'm, I'm just doing it because I was this this close to losing everything myself. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, I think that I've been given this opportunity to share this with other people. I think it's great advice. I mean, I love it when you just say, stay small. You don't yeah. need to take, I remember the, uh, the pogo stick guy, <laughs> yeah. you know. He was cool. Yeah, he's an Orange he County guy. He, he didn't need us. He was cool. Yeah. Stay small. And what happens with this is when you stay small, you may turn around and become huge. Yeah. You may be a kid in Harvard in your dorm who wants a couple of friends. Yeah. You may turn around a couple of years and have a billion of them. Yeah. Right? Stay small. Start small. You may be a guy with a little syrup and water in a cup. You yeah. call it Coca-Cola and, you know, sooner or later something happens. But learn your mistakes small as well. Yeah. You know? What mistakes have you made? I want to know, uh, not from the perspective of, you know, as a confessional, but more of, you know, what's the hindsight? What did you learn? What mistakes I made? We don't have enough time to go over them, Give but I'm, I'm going to go over a couple. Yeah. I learned that, um, you know, we thought we were cool because FUBU was super fiery hot and we understood a lifestyle. So we thought that naturally we can go out and make an album, and we did. Not us singing, I'm talking about artists that we worked with because yeah. we already dressed all the artists, we already knew all the artists, right? Yeah. We were on half the video set, so creatively we understood it. But guess what? We didn't know the business behind it, so yeah, we sold a half a million units of the album, but it cost us $5 million to make the album because we didn't know any better. Yeah. I learned at that time that, you know, we, uh, there's no shortcuts. That's it. We didn't hire a, re a record executive. We didn't know our numbers. We didn't look at our numbers. We were spending money like drunken sailors. <laughs> you just And, you know, we were getting caught up. What was the reason we were doing it? Did we get exposure? Yes. But from the business model, we died, yeah. right? So, you know, I, I learned that mistake. Um, I learned that unless we have goals set, you don't know what you're doing. You know, I learned that when money came into the company, I would give friends, you know, here's a $100,000 raise, here's a $200,000 raise. Yeah. I learned that if you don't have a set formula in your company and you're doing $10 million of business and your, uh, let's say your salaries are a million, if you go off giving everybody money, before you know it, next year, your salaries are two and a half million, you're only doing $12 million in business. Yeah. I've learned to come up with a formula. Give people anywhere from 5% to 10% raise. You know that if your salaries are a million dollars, you know next year it's a million plus an average of seven and a half percent. I learned all these these things. Kind of standardizing, man. Just standardizing and yeah. coming up with formulas, you know, and learning sometimes when to quit. Yeah. You know, when to write it off. We're not good at this, you know. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of. I would have to say I'm afraid of doing the wrong thing for people, promising them something, thinking I can deliver it, and letting them down. Um, so I try to, uh, you know, under promise and over deliver. I'm not, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't cook the books, I don't sell you anything, this and yeah. that, but I wanna over deliver. And so why is that so important to you? I know you're a brand guy, yep. and brand is all about keeping your promise, and, uh, and that's what defines you, it ultimately defines your brand. And some people would argue with me that, you know, I'm not a brand, I'm a human being, but, you know, we well, are, the brand. we're brands. Yeah. But why, why is that so important to you? Why don't you want to let people down? Why does um, that scare you? Be, because I think that when people invest in you, that's a, it's a really, it's a big responsibility. And yeah. whether they invest their time or anything else into you, their hopes, their dreams, I just, I just, that's how I believe. So I love when people say, you know, I, I want to work with you. And I go, hey, you know, this is how it's going to be and you're only gonna make this amount, and you know, we may make more. I don't say, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Yeah. 
And I, I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter kind of guy. Um, um, for years, we didn't sell FUBU, and people all thought we did sell FUBU because we never walked into a deal and just said, you're going to do a billion dollars tomorrow. And we just told them that we would say, uh, you know, the business is here. It may go here. You know, baggy yeah. jeans are not in as much, but we're going to turn around. And, you know, we never sold it, but we were very happy, uh, you know, what we did. So it sounds like integrity. Uh, it sounds like uh, relationships and reputation are three big, very big deals in your mind, in your life. Uh, yeah, I think that is key. I mean, you're, you're going to take that brand to the grave. And I want my daughters to be able to turn around and walk proudly and, and talk about, you know, their father and what, what I've done um, and just be proud about it. And that's even, listen, it, 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 even if I was just a lonely fisherman, which I, would, uh, I, I wanted to do prior to my FUBU, I was just doing that a hardworking guy. I think, I think it's just about integrity. Yeah. So how do you innovate? You know, we talk about uh, companies, there's a great book, right? Good to Great. Uh, and a lot of people start off with great intentions and they have a good idea. How do you take that to the next level? How do you innovate? How do you make it great? Well, first of all, again, learn the mistakes small and take affordable next steps, number one. Number two is surround yourself with a mastermind group. Um, you're not going to know everything. Yeah. Take inventory of yourself personally. What's your liabilities? What's your assets? You know, where do you need that assistance? You know, once you then go into market, proof of concept is sales. Go sell. You can make up your own opinion. You cannot make up your own facts. Right. And until you know your sales, you don't know what your customer is going to buy because you don't know if they like it, uh, you know, at this price. You don't know if they like this size, this color, this, you know, is it easy, is it functional? So until you sell, you don't know anything. And that's it. Sales cures all. Make a, take affordable next steps and keep selling and keep selling. It'll keep growing. So if you're small, you're just getting started, what advice would you give to people to, like, how do you find out that information? I mean, back in the day we did focus groups and those are really expensive. Nowadays we've got social media and, you know, small ecosystem of friends, but what would you say to that? You see, sales are not, are not always um, a cash transaction. Sales can be likes. Sales can be views. So the, the best thing I always say about sales is, first of all, Try to develop it within yourself and don't sell to your friends. If you sell some 10 things to 10 friends, if nine of them, nobody talks about it or they think it's crap, let's give it, let's say it's a, a, piece, a garment. If one of them just hears that somebody likes the color, they're gonna come back because they love you and say, man, they love this color. So and all you, you're gonna get high on that. So don't listen to your friends, that's your advice. Don't listen to your friends. Yeah. Put it out there in the world where people do not know you. Social media, consignment to a store, something of that nature. See if somebody's gonna go in their pocket, take their hard-earned money out, and buy it because they believe it improves their quality of life for some reason or another, yeah. and then grow on that. You see, people always say to me, you know what, I need to do a million dollars in business to get on Shark Tank. I said, you know, do you think you can get on Shark Tank you did $50 in business? They go, absolutely not. And I always say, if you pull up your car outside of a mall, you open your trunk and you were selling something for a dollar and you sold 50 of them in three minutes, you close that trunk, you call me. Yeah. Because we're <laughs> going to sell those things out of every single mall, city, state, country. We're even going to sell them on Mars if we can sell them that quick. Yeah. You don't know who's going to be the next pet rock of the next Snuggie. Yeah. You know? I love that uh, open-mindedness. Where are you going specifically for innovation? Like, what inspires you? Are you, are you reading magazines? Are you traveling, and is it, is it places and locations, is it people? What, where do you find your inspiration? I find my inspiration from mainly my kids. I find my inspiration from other kids, um, the digital natives of the day, you know, and I find my information from the health market. My two objectives are to go after health and fitness. You can't tell by this belly I have, but I'm going there, right? And to go after technology and make technology cool. And I find that the new digital natives and the, and the young kids in this market, they're going to be the consumer in another five years and you have to start now and watch, you know, watch what's going on with them. I'm not getting any younger these days, so I have to realize that you know, the new entrepreneurs are you know, the kids. And so I'm on social media all the time looking for new things. It's a great way to connect with your fans. Is it, are you fairly uh, easy to reach? I mean, uh, Twitter's your favorite. I'm, 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 I'm very easy to reach. There's many platforms and ways to reach me. I try to answer every single person that hits me on Twitter. I DM them some form of a message. I also have my staff that, um, that answers people. You know, so I, I'm, I'm very accessible. You're accessible, yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned health and fitness. You mentioned tech. Um, 
Let's focus on, on uh, one of those two industries. If you were to ever go to work for somebody or step and get offered the CEO role, this, you know, step into the helm, which company would you want to step in to CEO as? Um, I, would, I don't think I would ever do that. I, I wouldn't take a position like that. Uh, do I now consult CEOs privately? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I love learning, you know, you know, my, my, my four words, are, you know, I'm on a quest. Um, I love learning, so that's why I like to visit every CEO's shop, come at it with a fresh pair of eyes, consult them, and leave. So let me ask you another, another way then. So what companies do you think are doing it well in, in either of those industries? What companies are doing it well? Uh, not even just those industries. I mean, I love Zumba. I think that they tapped onto something. I think that they, they have something and they can actually uh, keep going in their area but also expand. Uh, I love a company called Mobley I work with who has, uh, who has um, um, video technology like Instagram with video. I love a company that I work with called Fuse Science, uh, you know, with Tiger Woods. Um, other companies, Urban Outfitter, great, great retailer, mm -hmm. has, has learned to change the game. Um, I still love Apple, you know, I'm, I'm still an Apple guy. Um, you know, so a lot of those companies, Whole Foods, amazing company, Amazon, who's about to own everything. <laughs> you know, there they, they, they are some really amazing companies that I say, wow, you know what, they did such, uh, Sephora, they did such great jobs that, uh, that you know, I'm, I'm amazed at. Yeah. So l let's go back to you possibly being unemployable. <laughs> yeah. What is it in your DNA? You think the, uh, the entrepreneurs are born or are they made? Good point. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur in residence in a, in a in Babson College, which is the number one college for entrepreneurship in the last 18 years. And I ended up learning from a book that the, uh, Professor Len Schlesinger um, wrote called Just Start. Okay. And the book explains entrepreneurship and says, basically the theory is we're all born thinking like entrepreneurs. You know, like when we crawl and we, start, and we fall, uh, you know, when we're trying to walk, we figure it out. Entrepreneurs always figure out, you're born thinking like an entrepreneur that, you know what, I'm going to figure this out regardless and I'm going to keep going. Now, often the challenge is families and friends convince you not to be an entrepreneur because when you say I'm going to change the world, I'm going to be the most famous person, I'm going to save the seals, they say don't do that. You, it, it didn't happen before. Yeah. You, it's never happened. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to fail. You're going to embarrass us. They put the limiters on it. They put the limiters on yeah. They put the blinders on you, but true entrepreneurs will just keep figuring it out. They'll take yes. affordable steps. Yeah, maybe a follow-up to that question is what are some of the obstacles that you are seeing entrepreneurs stumble over? You know, what's, what's getting people stuck? A lot of times it's the, uh, the corporate mentality or this mentality they see on TV. You know, these kids these days are, you know, watching TV and they believe that life is like a video, you know, a TV video. You know, in three and a half minutes, I woke up broke and now I have the girl, the guy, the car, the mansion, and the yacht. Yeah. Right? So they're, they're, they're thinking things happen too fast without putting in hard work, number yeah. one. Number two is the corporate guy who's an entrepreneur who wants to be an entrepreneur is too busy in the corporate world thinking and getting analysis paralysis. They're not yeah. just starting. They're going, well, I need to create this and this and this and this. Just go sell. I'll, I'll be successful when, or, or I can do this when I have, and they have all these It will never be a perfect right? time. You can only make yeah. time perfect. Yeah. Tell us something about you personally that we might not know from watching you on TV or through other your, your successful businesses. Um, you know, a lot of people just think I'm this business guy. I am a... I'm an avid fisherman, avid snowboarder. Um, I like to go to hotels and tell and, and use code names like uh, Kermit the Frog and Fozzie Bear. So when I call down at midnight and they say, hi, Mr. Frog, and I laugh and hang up the phone, I keep calling them 10 times. I, they got to keep calling me Mr. So you, Frog. So you got a good sense of humor. I, I love, I love, keep I mean, la life. it's all about laughter. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's it. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just, uh, I think I'm just a simple guy. I'm really a nature guy. Really? Yeah, I was born in New York City, but you know, um, that's it, fishing, snowboarding, dirt bike riding, ski shooting, that type of stuff. So where are some of the places that you've been inspired? You like nature, like what are some of your favorite spots? Uh, Nature-wise, I'm, 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 I always need to be around water. So whether it's Miami or it's LA or it's, uh, you know, uh, New York really, I mean, a lot of people don't think about it. New York has 300 miles of water, the seventh richest or eighth richest fishing ground in the world. Um, you know, I like the mountains, I like the Catskills, uh, uh, Big Bear, you know, I'm, I'm just a nature guy all around. That's awesome. All right, we've been spending a 
few minutes with entrepreneur and business mogul Damon John. Damon, thanks so much for being part of Thank the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This Behind the Brand episode is brought to you by DocuSign, the global standard for e-signature. Get your free trial at DocuSign.com forward slash Behind the Brand.